Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. So nice to have you here. It's episode number four, no, not four, five, 18. <laughs> 518 weeks of Category That's 5. Crazy. We're coming up on our 10th anniversary. We're going to tell you about that. Today is August 23rd, 2017. And coming up in the hour, we're going to be finalizing your computer builds shopping list. Do you think we can stick to the budget? I don't. <laughs> I never stick to a budget when it comes to building a computer. Oh my goodness! Uh, we're gonna get right into it in uh, in about 15 minutes time. It's gonna be awesome. So stick around, uh, and we've got a great show planned for you. Sasha's got the news. All right, here's what's coming up in the Category Five TV newsroom. The UN is about to get serious about killer robots. Do you have your own website? Google is start going to start warning users that your site is not secure if you have forms on a site that does not use a secure connection. Marcus Hutchins has pleaded not guilty, and the world's largest data center is being planned for the Arctic Circle. Stick around, the full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I feel like I'm running. Oh. <laughs> We're sitting on core stools tonight, folks. Check them out, cat5.tv slash stool. S-T-O-O-L. <laughs> These are cozy. Yeah, they're not bad. Just before the show, uh, Jeff was over there, and we had some music playing, and he was just kind of rocking with it. Rocking out to the rocking beats. Rocking with it. Uh, I guess the, the advantage to these is, like, it works your core. Yeah. And it keeps you, like, I, I doing something fitnessy. Well, sitting. You know more about this kind of stuff. I sit way too much. I was speaking with uh, a fitness instructor just the other day. Yeah, Robbie was speaking with a fitness instructor. <laughs> it's the first time for everything. And uh, she mentioned that, um, that sitting is akin to smoking. Yeah, sitting is the new smoking. Yeah. So I smoke about 40 packs a day. In sit. How is sitting, sitting the new smoking? I think it just is like it's bad for you. It's bad for your for your Life. body, your health, your, your back. And so, as a programmer, organs. you know, I work in an office all the time. So do sitting. A, yeah. Do you have a sit stand desk? I do not. Do I have, have a, course, a very much sit desk. Do you have a core stool? I have core stool here, and I Need. love it. So I'm thinking I'm going to buy one for the office yeah. too. Yeah. And the people that sit behind me will just have to bear with me because I'm sitting there going like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You don't have to rock back and forth. You don't forth. have it's, to. It's more like, uh, yeah, it's just... Okay, but the it? funny thing about the stools are that you guys can touch the floor, but I oh, want to yes. be the same height as everybody else, so I'm actually like four feet off the floor, pretty It's amazing. Much. Yeah. So yeah, I just like, This is a true story. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. Like, the difference between, like, the tops of our heads and, the, like, our feet. We should do a floor shot and see just where my, my legs are dangling. <laughs> They're like... We're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so know. my core is how going you, to be incredible, you, or my balance, or something. Yeah, how do you stay balanced? Because I can't. The first, the first week that we had these, what did you yeah, not see? You, I gripped the with desk with her feet off the floor. So look at Sasha's feet; yeah. they're up in the air. So okay. if you take your feet and no, your your feet are at the center of balance. He, he's got his feet right in the middle, up against the pole. Well, yeah, Put but if she out. did the same thing, she'd be fine. But she's yeah, I know, but she's not doing that. She's got her feet in front of her, and she's still. Totally well, if balanced. She, if she doesn't know how to balance, it's not my fault. And and so the viewers at home are wondering, what are they on about? So it looks like this. Can so you like, can you show the, like a little, the yeah, beveled bobble, bottom? Yeah, there's the bottom. So it's it is like curved, uh, but it's designed in such a way you can't fall off it. You can't tip. That's it. true. I tried to I tried to fall backwards the other day just to see if I could. It's pretty cool. I want to catch. Yeah, myself you don't. All the you time, don't fall off. off. Well, I mean, you well, could just, if you, you lean too Yeah, like heavy. if you were like, if you but were like, ridiculous. But in general, like I'm leaning all the way back right now. And <laughs> Lord willing, I'm not going to smash my head off the back wall. <laughs> but it does feel stable. So anyway. just recently I found out that like we have like local view like local viewers that I know. Here in like, Barrie, in Ontario? Barrie, in Barrie. So nice. now I'm, now I'm going to go uh, to work. Hi, Doug. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Bill and Jackie. Hi, Jackie. It turns out there's a lot of Jackies who watch. Oh, yeah? Um, <laughs> But um, <laughs> it's the keyword. It's the main keyword on our site. So when they Google themselves, we just come up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Now I feel like I'm gonna be made fun of forever for rocking on this stool. Do you okay. think so? <laughs> no. They'll be like, where can I get mine? Cat5.tv/stool. 
Right. Right. We gave away nearly 300 copies of my wife's newest novels. Nice. Uh, just over the weekend. Thank you to everybody who downloaded it. Um, and uh, if you are a patron, we still have an opportunity for you to get her latest book. It's, uh, it's a novel. It's called When the Fog Cleared. And again, if you're a patron, uh, you can check out the post on our Patreon page. And uh, you'll be able to still get that download as well. Um, our 10th anniversary show with Carrie Webb, that's, that's coming up. Yeah, September 27th. What episode was your first? I believe it was episode it was nine. nine. Yeah. It was the Sherathon. Sherathon Express. Yeah. So Jeff has been uh, has been a part of the show in in some way because he was here on episode number nine and then I started as your hairstylist. <laughs> That didn't go very well. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done, Jeff? That treatment that you, that moisturizer did me over. <laughs> boy, oh boy. As we remember, I don't remember my first episode. I have a false memory of my first I know, episode. That's funny, I don't eh? remember it at all. Yeah. Um, and I just got a notification uh, today from <gasps> Facebook. Oh, did yeah. You see that? Cheers, buddy. We're, Cheers. It's her anniversary. Five years, Five friends year. on Facebook. Five year friend anniversary. So that must give us. Some I don't know if we became friends on Facebook before you started on the show. It would have been after, after because yeah. this is my five year anniversary with Dave. Okay. Right? And I was on the show. It was a lot one of, of good things it happened was in one your life of that my, year. <laughs> it was one of my winning qualities. I was like, and also I'm on a show. And he said, Okay, mm. you wanna go out? Oh, you <laughs> used that card, did you? Of course I did. Oh, I'm you I'm may a tech yeah. Talk show host. You look familiar. Oh, well, you might have seen me. <laughs> <laughs> On the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so back to our anniversary. 10th anniversary of the show, of the network. Yep. Um, and it's on September 27th. We would love to have you come and join us here in studio for the live broadcast. Carrie Webb is going to be here. She was my first co-host, and now she is one of the hosts of our program called New Every Day uh, on the Category 5 TV network. And uh, you can join Join us here. So just go to our website, Category5.tv, and request your free tickets. Space is limited, of course, mm -hmm. here at Studio D. And so it's uh, first come, first served for the tickets. And without a ticket, you can't get in. So keep that in mind. Do I need a ticket? You, I believe, are already on the list, sir. I am also on the list. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sasha, you can't. Why is Robbie the only one on the air? Oh, you guys forgot to request your tickets. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, looking at entertainment this week, I discovered uh, Marvel's new show, The Defenders, How on is Netflix. It? Well, we watched, we just discovered it last night because Netflix gives us the recommendations of, hey, you might enjoy, mm -hmm. and here you go, and saw the trailer and thought, hey, this actually looks like it's got some backstory to it. So mm -hmm. now it was good. We just watched the pilot. We're not binge watchers or anything like that. That, but we'll definitely watch the next one. Oh, but see, that's good. First impressions, good. Uh, we really like Legion because having we're never we've never been big on superhero shows. Okay. Because mm -hmm. usually it's there's no backstory, there's no substance to it, and with Legion was the first one we saw that really worked on character development and the the arc of the character and their lives and things like that. So now to see another show that they're kind of taking that same approach from the pilot anyways, that's the impression I got. A lot of character development, a lot of um, better dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like, um, what was the one? The Flash. Dialogue was terrible. Oh, yeah. It was like, it was like teenager. They've it, never produced a good Flash show. Even the one in the 80s was yeah. horrible. Maybe that's I part of your thing. So bad. Maybe. I wanted so bad Maybe. to like it. Right. No, no, it's just poor writing. Yeah. And uh, so to see another Marvel show coming out that looks like it's, it's well done. That's, that's good. I've been watching Penn and Teller Fool Us. Nice. Binge watching it, in fact, because I, yeah. unlike you, you I, I'm a one. binge watcher. <laughs> yeah. um, so Dave and I got into that. And the one thing I would say that I would recommend everybody watch it for is the fact that as a reality TV show, yeah. Penn and Teller are so respectful and uplifting. And um, really, they compliment the people on the show for yeah, their right. efforts, as opposed to some of the other shows that can do a little bit of tearing down fool um, us was the one where um aspiring magicians yeah. got up on the stage to perform in front of penn and teller who are wildly respected oh, uh, yeah. magicians uh, from vegas and uh and i guess do their tricks for them yeah 
I so, yeah, love I always like that about that show. I did not have a clue that I liked magic as much as I just yeah? found out I do. Cool. <laughs> have you seen Brain Games? I saw the first. Wait, I saw yes. The pilot. Is that the one where you like stare at the TV for a second, then all yeah. of a sudden yeah. things are a different color? Yeah. yeah. That one's kind of yes, neat. Yes, that is really neat. It's on our list on Netflix. Mm-hmm. We've only watched the pilot. It was fun, but because usually we sit down for a show after hours, get the kids to bed after dinner and everything else. Um, it's not really the kind of thing that you want to sit down and watch after a day's at work. It's something for a Saturday morning or something right. and sit down. The kids the would actually enjoy that one. The kids too. would really enjoy it, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. We, uh, th- the first episode is the one where they talk about colors and colorblind. Yeah. Luke is colorblind. And so, so what was the effect for him? He did not like the show. Really? <laughs> yeah, because there were some things that they showed where they're like, if you're colorblind, you won't see this. And he's, he, he hates to fail. Wow. So he's looking at the screen going... I'm not seeing it. And we're like, <laughs> well, it's because you're colorblind, dude. You can't see green. Yeah. And he's like, I don't like this. It doesn't do anything for him. Wow. Isn't that yeah. interesting? So, yeah. so does green just show up as gray to him? Like uh, the green screen? What color would that be to Luke? I guess you could, you're not in Luke's brain, so. Yeah, I'm, generally I'm not in his brain that often. <laughs> um, although I do see into, into the way he thinks sometimes. But no, he just... he uh, he. His green is severely muted. I don't know if that's the right okay, word. Like yeah. he can still see shades of green. Like can we tell it's green? Yes, because he's learned yes. that it's green. Okay. And so that makes me wonder, what are colors? Like, is my red the same as your red? Well, I found this out. I am slightly colorblind. Okay. If, uh, and particularly if it's a bright sunny day, if I'm driving and I close my right eye, yeah, the world has. Um, like a red tone to it. Really? Like the earth tones really shine. If I close, so I close my right eye, I get the red. If I close my left eye, everything has a blue tone to it. It's very it interesting. Except you're, you're, it's like, you're, you're you missing have 3D a cone glasses. In each eye. Something yeah. like that, yes. <laughs> I see he doesn't the world. need to wear I see the, the glasses. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, clearly it's uh, something that's in the family. But, uh, yeah, huh. so he, he was not a fan of that first episode. Yeah, so this it. is a show, you, you've seen memes and things like that on Facebook and things fly by where, you know, if you stare at the picture long enough and then look away, it turns into a face or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are they're really, really cool optical illusions and things like that. So a right. whole show that surrounds that that premise yes right. and really quite well done so yeah. uh, we're big on documentaries and things like that and mm-hmm. we're getting into there's a there, there's a new uk documentary that we just got into and we like um uh what's the name of it the boss undercover boss oh we loved secret millionaire this I is not seen that rich one. folks who go and pretend that they're not rich they I go would into be willing the wor- to try that yeah they go into the world and it, no but they go yeah <laughs> they go and and they get to know people on the street or in you know areas where there aren't very many rich folk right and they get to know them they get to learn what they could do to help the community and things like that Ooh. and then they show up and they start writing checks for ten thousand dollars to people and reveal oh, their true nice. identity and say oh cool. well, i'm actually a millionaire and you Here's- know I'd, I'd like to uh donate twenty five thousand dollars to your your youth hostel Mm -hmm. you know those kinds of things so that's secret millionaire but now um we're into um oh what's uh what did i say it was the The undercover boss yes so similar kind of premise where the very high coo or ceo of the company steps down into a role where he's doing the grunge work right getting to know the people that actually work under him and how they can improve their company and do things to to help the people that work for them so it always ends well for the people that are working amongst the ceo yes for those folks yeah it's like (laughs) well what about the people who didn't get to work with him well that's the thing like (laughs) not everyone can be included but still great premise great but that show has been on for a couple of years because i know Mm -hmm. i I remember seeing it a couple of years ago Mm -hmm. um but i've noticed they never stick them with a horrible employee I would love to see an episode. I have seen one where, yes, they did. Oh, really? And what happened? Did the person get fired? Yes. Really? Not, not on the show. After the show, they do the wrap up, like what happened to the, you know, so so and so got, you know, this and so and so, you know, the, this one that we just watched, the, uh, the youth basketball team got a van that could hold 12 people or something oh, okay. and so it, it tells you the things that ha- that happened after the broadcast kind of thing after mm-hmm. the the thing happened and in this particular one yeah so and so got fired 
is no longer with the company, <laughs> is what it said. So yes, nice. it does happen. It does happen. Oh, that's yeah. good. Mm. I like that. Uh, Password Box has announced the final end date for being able to Soon. use Password Box. So being able to log in. Right now, you can still log in. Uh, it's August in 2017, and they announced it a while ago that they were yeah, closing it down. Yeah, I remember covering that. Yeah, so um, it's September 27th uh, is the date that mm-hmm. they are no longer going to be operational. They're shutting down the servers. So if you mm-hmm. haven't already, and you were a user or are a user of Password Box, that's the password management plugin, uh, make sure you export your, uh, your passwords to a CSV file so you can import them into last pass or key pass x or whatever you want to do um, and if you're not sure how to do that it, you can actually go to our website category 5.tv click on the search icon up at the top right and just simply do a search for password box as mm-hmm. jeff mentioned we covered it uh, we actually show you uh, step by step how to export your passwords when i did that i imported them into LastPass, and mm-hmm. that's what i've been using ever since so it's a very straightforward process. I've been using TrueKey. So you upgraded. You took the upgrade, but that's a commercial upgrade, so you've got to pay for that. No, I took the free one. How, how does that work? I don't Only quite, so many passwords. Only so many passwords, but okay. I don't need very many. But it was I only, have billions. I do not have billions. I create a new password for every single service that I go to, right. and that's the way I, I do it. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm on a lot of services. I have like 10. I'm yeah. capped. Oh, that's cool. So if it works for you, then great. But if you're someone like me that has something like 250 passwords, then yeah, yeah, you use something else. Password Keeper, I think it's called. Okay, it's a premium service, so I pay the subscription. Um, But it it syncs between my phone, all of our computers. So whether my wife's logging in on her oh good Mac or you know whether it's my computer, Mm -hmm. Um, so. it's nice on that front because all the passwords are accessible. And, right. Uh, and one of the, th- the features about it that I like is if, uh, because I'm the account holder, if I die, um, there is um, like a, a fe- legacy. Or- yeah, there's a feature where... Password box had legacy. Mo- uh, legacy yeah, where she can say locker. I need access and they'll, you know, after right. a 48 hour period, if okay. I, you know, she can get access to everything. Yeah, cool. And I'm like, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because a lot, like I do a lot of the back end stuff, sure. you know, with our network and all that. And she has no clue what those passwords oh, yeah. would yeah. be. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Boy, oh boy. Uh, I always thought, wouldn't it be cool to create <clears throat> like a KeyPass X Raspberry Pi server that Ooh. we could put on a static IP and, and host awesome. your own? You could do that. You could run your own that would be fun. password box equivalent. And we want to eventually <laughs> do that. I think that would be a lot of fun. I think so. Too. A lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned at the top of the show tonight we are getting into the final phase of Sasha's dream computer build. Um, so we're going to be finalizing our shopping list. That's right. So excited, and I don't even get to use it. You get to I'm look excited. at it. I do get to. You look get at to it. smell it. I do. We're going to fin- finish up that list, figure out what the final steps, uh, what the final product is going to be, right after this quick break. Now here's another great way you can support the shows you love from the Category 5.TV network by shopping at GearBest. That's right, Jeff. Uh, Cat5.TV slash GearBest. It's an online store for the geek streak in you. Or the loved ones. Well, of course. I mean, especially your loved ones, right? Uh, Because Cat5.TV slash GearBest, quite frankly, has all of the greatest tech gifts that you could ever hope for at rock bottom prices. Do they have cell phones? You betcha. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has a wide assortment of unlocked Android cell phones and tablets. What about compu- uh, consumer electronics? Those make a great gift. Absolutely. From high-tech watches to action cameras, headphones, even virtual reality headsets. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has you covered. They literally have it all, Jeff. Literally. Really? It's like a superstore right from the comfort of your own chair at your computer through the interweb. Yeah, I, there's no way they have it all. It's true. It's just a bunch of ele- uh, random electronics. Test me. Um, what about clothes? Yep. Both men and women, fashionable apparel at rock bottom, super duper prices. Kind of like this. Well, look at this coat. What do you think? It's a slimming mock leather jacket. I love it. It's available for less than $30 plus free shipping at cat5.tv slash gearbest. All right. You kind of got me there. Wow. 
Any other questions for me, Jeff? Uh, now that the winter has passed, flying season. Do they have any good deals on, say, drone copters? Oh my goodness! Well, check this out. Dude, they have everything. Check out over 500 various drones. And not only that, they're available marked down by about 30 to up to 63% off the regular price. Love it. What's the website again? Well, you're going to find GearBest on our partners' pages for any of your favorite Category 5 TV shows like New Every Day, Category 5 Technology TV, The Pixel Shadow. Uh, but of course, if you want to shop absolutely right now and you want to go straight to the site, all you have to do is visit cat5.tv slash GearBest. See, that's easy. Cat5.tv slash GearBest. That's right. Happy shopping. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in live every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit our website, category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. Welcome to part three of Help Sasha Build the Dream Gaming Computer. Mm. Thank on, you. On part one. We kind of learned where you wanted to go with it, what your budget was, what your dream is of this mm -hmm. beautiful computer for your soon-to-be husband, Dave. That's right. It's happy husband, system. happy life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great computer in the living room uh -huh. uh, to showcase to all your friends. Very cool. Uh, so that's what we did on part one. Right. Part two, we, we got started by selecting a processor. We decided, yep. you know what, let's take some advice from the chat room and select our processor first and then build out from that. Right. So this week, we've spent some time back and forth in the forum, in the chat room, and, uh, and really got a lot of help from viewers to figure out, okay, what motherboard are we going to go with? What chassis are we going to go with? What power supply? All these kind of components. And even little things like Garby mentioning, uh, don't forget to get some thermal paste. Well, it's such a simple thing. And, you know, well, yeah, we're going to stick a heat sink on top of that CPU. We need something called thermal paste to make sure that we get a good seal. Okay. And that's going to make sure that it runs as cool as possible. Right. So. I found out. Well, you know what? I found out. What did you find well, out? Well, I was in the studio. Was it last week? And the battery for my bike burnt out. But computers yes. use one of those 2032s. Yeah, she's 30, got. 20, yeah. She's on her bike, and she's like, "I my lights aren't working." And I said, "Well, what are they? Rechargeables?" And no, they're not rechargeable. I got to replace them. They're like watch batteries or something. I said, "Well, what are they?" And so she showed me, and they said, "CR 2032." Uh, mm -hmm. So. I pulled a CR2032 out of two computers that we got just sitting here and got you home safe and sound. I haven't replaced them yet, yeah, so thank still you good. for the loan. Yeah. So now <laughs> i got to reset my RAID controllers. Fantastic. Sorry, Robbie. <laughs> That's the battery, that, and your new computer's going to have that battery. The CR2032 maintains power to the circuits, even when the power is unplugged or turned off, so that all of the configuration settings are remembered. So does it come already or am I ordering it separate? It comes with the battery. Yes. So good. Yeah, it comes on the motherboard. Yep. Okay, so first of all, before we get into it, big thanks to all of our viewers who have helped us out with the product selection. We had mm -hmm. Garby was instrumental in uh, in this. Loved friend, NICAD, C128D, the Foo, Albuquerque Turkey, uh, Trevor Hanwell, Sparkly Balls, Tech Studier, Big Kitty, and so many more. I know that a lot of you helped out in the chat room. Can I just say, like, mm. I've been reading in, like, I've been reading everything I can, and I've been not really understanding it all. And I will tell you each individually how incredibly smart you are. I am just, like, amongst geniuses, because I have <laughs> no clue what you're talking about, but I'm pretty sure this computer is going to be amazing. <laughs> I don't know what they just said, but it sounds good. Just, I'll, I'll throw 2100 bucks at that. <laughs> Get her a toaster with lights and... <laughs> She'd be. That's, that was my suggestion. <laughs> that was my like, suggestion. I, well, I really, honestly, am blown away by well, I what I don't know, and also how amazingly knowledgeable you are. Thank you, and thank you. And it's been a process. Yeah. We've been back and forth. We we were very very close to switching to a Ryzen processor last like Thursday. 
<laughs> because it was suggested and we started doing some research. But the foo reminded me that Ryzen has some issues in Linux. And a lot of folks are, are experiencing this where the Ryzen processor will seg fault. And that means oh. basically your computer crashes. And Sasha, you're going with Linux. Mm -hmm. We want stability. We want rock solid stability, mm -hmm. proven, tried and true. Intel is that. Intel, you know, no matter what you think of the company, they make good processors and they are very good for Linux. So, yep. um, so we started looking at, okay, so uh, yeah, I was very tempted by Ryzen. I'll tell you why. Best bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. More power for the same price. More cores. Like, things like that. Real sweet selling points. Like, wow, twice as many cores, uh, higher base frequencies. That's awesome for the same price. What? Uh, but then we started looking at stability. And I started reading, uh, you know, the benchmarks look fantastic. But then you start reading about how uh, certain types of RAM um, will cause the Ryzen to underperform. And oh. there's all these kinds of issues that hopefully AMD will release a firmware patch for. And nobody really knows when. And so it's just so wishy washy and not quite there yet. So, mm -hmm. so then we started looking uh, at the 7740X, and the thinking there is we were looking at the 7700K, okay? okay? So this is the processor. This is the brains. Okay. We were looking at that last week, and that's what we ultimately decided on uh, at the end of last week's episode, part two. Um, the 7700K is basically the end of the line for the, uh, I think it's the 1151 socket, the, the socket that it goes in. Right. So you think about, you know, when you plug in the chip, it has to fit into the socket. Well, this is kind of the last one. So there's no, there's no upgrade path of the processor from this point. So if you ever wanted to upgrade the processor, it, uh, you're going to be replacing the motherboard as well, which means more RAM and everything else. So uh, Garby and I started talking about it, chat room started talking about it, we started talking about it in the forum. Let's look at the 7740X, which is the next line, which is going to take us into a new socket, and that socket is future ready because it is basically the new socket. So, mm -hmm. and now we're looking at the 7740, which is a little bit higher base frequency, a little tiny itty bitty a bit faster in theory than the 7700K, but it's the base of, the, like, it's the entry level for this new socket. So you can always upgrade the processor from there. But then we got to looking at the prices and things like that. And yeah, it, it's almost on par, but there aren't um, peripherals available for that socket. So here in Canada, you know, one of the, so one of the things we have to look at is we need to cool this thing. Well, mm -hmm. here in Canada, there are actually no CPU coolers yet available for the 7740X. And wow. it's not, it doesn't come with one. <clears throat> so we can't even get away wow. with using a stock fan cooler. So I looked at uh, Canada computers, none. I looked on Amazon, none. I looked on Amazon.com, Garby did as well. We found one CPU cooler. It doesn't ship to Canada. So <sighs> then we start looking, okay, maybe this is too new. And then I start thinking, well, what if the 7740, you know, because it is... Uh, like it's newer and, mm -hmm. and what if there are problems what if there are things we don't know about and then i start reading about comparisons and people still com saying you know go with the 7700k for now because it's tried and true it's rock solid it's proven to be an amazing gaming processor can do 4k video can do all that stuff mm -hmm. so it's it's known to be good and uh so why not go that route so then i s said well <clears throat> but you can't upgrade the CPU. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, forward path for this CPU. Garby made uh, Garby hit on it. He got he made the point. When is Sasha going to upgrade her CPU? Really? When is it going to happen? And I realized <clears throat> that you're not. No. 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 I know you're not. Like <clears throat> if you want a faster car, you're not going to replace the engine. You're going to just sell your car and buy a new car, right? Mm -hmm. If you want a faster computer or a different computer five years from now, you're not going to go through the upgrade process. You're going to get what's current at that time. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, simply put, it really starts to be clear that the 7700K is a the good choice go. for this. Yeah. And good bang for the buck. Proven, tried and true. Let's get into it. <clears throat> Join me at the forum. Cat5.tv slash CPU 2017. 
just like it sounds. So cat5.tv slash CPU 201... Did I say 2014? You said 2017. 2017. Okay, 2017. That's right. Okay, so you'll see that we have now, Sasha, essentially finalized um, our shopping list. But I have a couple of questions for you just okay. before we really get into it. Now, first of all, we know the processor. That's all we know so far, Jeff. <laughs> Step all one. right, processor. good start. It's as far as we got. But hey, um, <clears throat> what do we need next? We need a computer chassis. We need to put that processor on a motherboard. We need RAM for that mother mm -hmm. motherboard. All this kind of stuff. So first thing we need to look at is the motherboard. Right. Now, I had started pricing them out, Sasha, and they were like $400, $450 just for the motherboard. And Garby said, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. And then he sends me a link to one that's 180 some odd dollars. And Did it's we MSI. Pick that one? Yeah. Okay, good. It's MSI. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful board. It's, again, tried and true. The reviews are fantastic. Uh, no, I'm wrong. It's not MSI. We were looking at M MSI. This is actually a Republic of Gamer. Fantastic. Oh. Even better. So that this is an ROG from Asus. Sounds awesome. It really is. I, I don't know why I still had MSI in my head. Let's take a look. So this is, oh, and this is, this is showing us more than I had just said. Maybe we had switched it. Sasha, we have been over so many different boards and things. What do I have the price at? Okay, pardon me. It's $262.99 is what I had priced it at. So that was my mistake when I said $180. I think that was a different board that we Could were looking at. Could have been US price maybe? Maybe. <laughs> yes, that's quite possible. I'll bet you it is. So, Sasha, here's okay. the motherboard. So this is the internal uh, system board for your computer. Right. Okay? It, it First thing, sharp. that's the socket. Okay? okay, so that's where the CPU goes in. Those slots at the right-hand side, the yeah. four of them that you see, those are, um, those are for your RAM. We've got solid-state capacitors, nice, good, solid uh, motherboard. We've got uh, the CoPro uh, heatsink actually lights up, apparently. There's your CR2032, the, the uh, battery there. We've got a couple of PCIe slots, so we've got an X16. Why is there a them. start button on the bottom of it? Uh, well, you can actually, um, it, well, let's see. You've, you've probably got, yeah, you see the LED at the top right there that says yeah. 88? Yeah. Um, so that is basically for diagnostics um, during the build. Uh, if you ever have any problems, it'll show you a code in numbers, and you can power it off, power it on, and, and oh, things nice. like that. So if the case buttons aren't work, it's, it's really for diagnostics, and it's a power board. Like, it's pretty sweet for the dollars. So that's cool. That's very cool. Now, it does not come with... Uh, any onboard video cards it looks like. So Good. we're going to have to make sure that we take care of See, that. See, we had this discussion, Jeff, because she's got a 4K 60-inch TV. Yeah, you don't want to go with on We're not going with onboard no. video. No. Now, but that said, we are going with onboard audio because this one has a nice built-in sound card and it's 7.1. Oh, really? it has yeah, it has optical output. It's got 7.1 analog outputs. Um, you can see them there. I'm not oh, sure okay. if we have a close up of the back here, but you can see there the the uh, SPDIF out and the 7.1 outputs as well. Is that USB three? Uh, yeah, we've got USB that three was a big point part. there. Yeah, yep. and on board as well. So you see the headers there. So we're going to be able okay. to use a case that has top USB ports like you wanted. Yeah. Right? Okay, so now we've got an ATX full size. Uh, motherboard. Let's get a look at the case. So the one I was really intrigued with, I'm just going to do a quick search for uh, Thermaltake. I use all Thermaltake chassis here. I love them. They make some really good stuff. And the Versa um, C22, I think it is. Yes. Um, oh, I love this one. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> but you see what I like what? about it, Sash? It's got built-in LEDs. Okay. It's already there. You don't have to buy LED upgrade kits and things like that. And okay, the good. price is insanely cheap. What the heck? Seriously? Really? So, yeah. So then I'm looking at, um, you know, so one of the things that are, is a concern for me, I have to think of everything for you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to go with Linux. So I do. when we buy a case that has built-in LEDs, what's the one thing we can run into a problem with? Just any guesses? No. Windows driver software. And oh, Windows controller yes. software. So if, if the case uses an LED controller that requires software to do it, to control it, to change it, Sasha said, I don't want rainbow. Well, I said, well, you can set it to just red. <laughs> 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 but what if the software was a Windows-only piece of software? Right. So turns out this particular case has uh, a controller built in that is 
button presses on the top. So over here, there are buttons that oh, you can actually that. press. It's a hardware controller. Ah. You don't need any software to change the LEDs. So looking at that sash, let's get down here in the images. There are some pictures that I like. I like a lot. Okay, there we go. Let's see. So look at all the different color schemes that you can use with the LEDs. Ooh, Ooh, do you want to get an too. option? Hey? Black or white? Yeah, well, there's a black one. Okay, there let it me is. see. Oh, show me black and red. Show me black and red over there. Black and, oh, in red? Yes. Yeah, so uh, there you go. I realize I can change it. How do you like that? That is nice. So are we thinking uh, that is a Cylon right there? That's Watch nice. out. Uh, okay, so do we cool. want to take a look at the black one? I think so. All right, so let's go back here. And I, yeah, I mean, if. Well, what? This what? Is, this works. What would that. Dave do? WWDD. <laughs> I believe Dave would pick the black one, okay. the white one. So let's pick the black one. Okay, so scroll up here. And Amazon has got them all coupled together. Now the price has gone up 20 bucks to go black. Well, so that's I got to do it. it I gotta Look at that. So it's got a glass side, so they're going to see the inside. We wanted something. You're going to see the internal components. Yeah, you need to. Blow everybody we away. we showing right? them off. Now, oh, that man. glass side does not have any uh, screw holes for an additional fan. For the chassis, uh, so a, a fan on the exterior, yes, uh, of the case. Like there's one at the back, but there's <clears> none yeah. at the side. Is that going to be an issue for the, the processor? Pearling? Like I know you can get hmm. some cases. It's pretty deep. This is a full size case. Oh, okay, um, so it's not a mid tower. So maybe we should look at a fan that is going to be cross draft, not blowing out, right, or blowing pulling in, right. Yes. So something that's blowing um, the the air across so from the front to the back yes and then we're going to blow it out the back with the 120 mil fan that comes with it yeah. um, there is a place in the front bezel as well as in the top for another 120 mil fan oh okay uh, which you can buy separately right but so we're going to look at a um <clears throat> we're going to look at a cpu cooler that is going to be um side mount i'm going to show you what that's going to look like all right okay. Sash? cool okay all right so um thermal take again they make good cpu coolers uh, let's get a look at that. So here's I've one. never had a bad one from Thermal Take. No, I agree. And I mean, it's a 120 mil fan. You can replace it if you want. But this is a 120 mil uh, Thermal Take Silent fan. They are so quiet, so beautiful. Uh, so that is <clears throat> side blow. We're gonna call it. <laughs> it's not pulling the air down right. into the. It's pulling it across the fins. Okay. okay. So that's what it's gonna look oh, like right. <clears throat> on a motherboard. So that that should work quite well in that yeah. case. Very good. Okay. What else do we need? <laughs> RAM. Yes. Oh, boy. Which is random access memory. That yes. I know. That I well know. done. Yeah. Nicely done. Five years on the show. <laughs> Garby said, <laughs> you know, and <clears throat> I totally agree with this. You've got to look at the Kingston Fury RAM. This is the HyperX yes. Fury. It is built for gaming. Okay. Beautiful stuff. Um, it has built-in cooling, so it has its own built-in heat sink mm -hmm. because it's going to get warm because we're probably going to overclock this bad boy, mm -hmm. you know? So you want something that has built-in um, um, heat sinks. Okay. So here you go. Now, I know that this is not what Garby had in mind, yeah. but I want you to have kind of out the gate something pretty smash and sweet. So this is the Kingston HyperX Fury Black 32 gig set. It's two two sims now your motherboard can handle up to 64 gigs so you could buy two of these sets for four modules and you could have 64 gigs of ram these ones run at 2666 megahertz super fast okay so these are good <laughs> probably best I, awesome. yes when i was buying my computer last year i was looking at this ram and i just i, uh -huh. I couldn't uh -huh. i couldn't get the price Four hundred and seven dollars right. and twenty six cents, Sasha. Right. So we're talking the RAM itself is valued about the same as our processor, which is, uh, you know, the CPU itself is four hundred and twenty nine ninety. But the RAM is like your processor, the brains of the computer. The RAM is what makes it perform. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you've got bad RAM, you're going to have it crashing out. You're going to have problems or maybe just not getting the speed that your computer is capable of. So having great RAM from Kingston, it's going to make sure that it's perfectly gameable. It's going to be amazing. Right. right? So, uh, all right, next up, 
we talked about the storage, what we need uh, as far as two things. Mm -hmm. First of all, operating system. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be Linux. Mm -hmm. And then your, uh, your data drive, that's for storage, that's for um, your videos, for the game data and things like that. Okay. So we want basically two storage mediums. I like to do it that way because then we can use cheaper by the gigabyte storage mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. data and more expensive but super screaming fast for the operating system and, and Which is important. software. Yeah, so then we get the best speed for the dollar. Right. Uh, rather than, in, <clears throat> pardon me, and I excuse, excuse the frog in my throat, um, but then we're getting the best bang of the, for the buck with the most amount of storage space and the most amount of capacity right. that we can get for the dollar. So, Lyndon, um, no, pardon me, it wasn't Lyndon, it was, um, let's see, I've got notes here. Loved friend. Loved friend mentioned and really put me on to, <clears throat> okay, the motherboard supports M2, M.2. Mm -hmm. M.2, as we mentioned last week, is super, super fast. Mm -hmm. One gajillion terabytes per second. Super fast. No, SATA, <clears throat> SATA uh, hard drives, SSD, are limited to the bus that they're on, SATA. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get, um, you know, my, my drives are about 550 megabytes a second, which is fantastic. Um, M2, you can get like almost 2,000 megabytes a second for wow. writes. Yeah, it's, it's like four times the speed. So <clears throat> they're very, very fast, but they're, they're more money for the, uh, per gigabyte. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stick a small one in there for you, Sasha. Um, so we're going to go with a 240 gig Kingston um, uh, KC1000, I believe, is probably the one that we're going to opt toward. <clears throat> it is, um, it's an M2 card, and it's going to give you um, that storage, but it's only 240 gigs, mm -hmm. so it's strictly for the operating system, okay? Yeah, that's fine for an OS. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. So there you go, 210 bucks and 59 cents for 240 gigs. Super, super fast. I wonder if it's got specs here as far as speed goes, megabytes. Amazon.ca is a little limited compared to... Um, the dot .com. Yeah, dot .com. But, so it's an M2. It's like a chip instead of a hard drive. Right. And it's super, super fast. Okay, so that's going to run all your programs, your games, and Steam, everything else. Okay? Then we need storage. So we're going to look at an S SSD. <clears throat> Garby again pointed out that um, we probably don't need to go with a RAID as long as we go with a good quality SSD because SSDs these days have gotten so reliable. Now, RAID is nice because you've got redundancy. If a drive ever fails, you can pull it out and, uh, and put in another one and okay. you don't lose any data. So, of course, cost is, a, is kind of a factor here. So we need to, we, we're getting to our budget now at this point. So we, we're going to go with one drive. And I'm going to just tell you, you need to keep a backup of things that are important to mm -hmm. you. That's, that's a given. Yep. And that's just the way it is. So I've been bit. Mm. Mm -hmm. My wife didn't back up her Mac when we lost all of our oh. photos. Oh. Uh, that happened to me too. Yep. Yeah. So do keep a backup, okay? So I know that's yeah. not part of this budget, but get a backup drive. Get something right. that you can copy things onto so that there's redundancy. Can it wait till our <clears> anniversary, <throat> perhaps? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, just gets one computer part per year from yeah, this point on. And it's going to take you a while. <clears throat> it's going to take you a while to fill it up. Uh, we're going to go now. Our, the M2 is is from Kingston's. You know, it's the the business grade, super sleek, super fast, um, super reliable uh, module um, as far as storage goes. Now we're going to take a different approach for the data drive because now we can get into SSDs that are built for gaming. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, of course, we're going to look at the HyperX Savage. Uh, there's a 960 gig drive that's available for just under 500 bucks. Okay? Those so that is, drives. that's a terabyte Kingston HyperX Savage drive for 500 bucks. So the speed of these for SSDs are uh, is savage. Well, we did that one episode where we were um, clocking them. Were we using a Savage Drive for the yes. laptop? Yes. Nice. Yes, we were. Mm -hmm. It was like unbelievably fast. The performance gain, like if, you, if you're running a spinning drive, throw one of these in your computer and you will be blown away. It was unreal. That was last season, I think. It's possible. Do a search on our website, Kingston. 
Yeah. Category 5.tv. Oh, so good. Uh, so this drive is screaming fast. It's got a lot of storage for you, Sasha. And bang for the buck, it's going to have a, like a terabyte of storage space for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's an SSD. So you get right. the speed of an SSD and a good one. Uh, and you get uh, the reliability of an SSD. And you've got enough space to That's store important. your stuff. Okay? Yes. Moving along. We're almost there. You excited? Yes. Are you getting scared of the price? Yes. I know. <laughs> I know. But, I mean, truth be told, I sold my car, as we all know, right? And Oh, good. She right. sold her car for this, folks. No pressure. <laughs> sold my car. So, from the sale of my car, I paid off an outstanding line of credit, yes. right? And, and But then I also had a little chunk of savings that I knew, like... I was going to use in a positive manner. I just wasn't sure exactly at the right. point what I was going to do with it. Okay. So I have it. I have the savings for something like this. And who better to give it to than Dave? And what better use than building him a computer? Perfect. Here. And I think you're going to get now. a lot out of this as well. I'm totally. This is yeah. for, for me for the win too. So as we continue <laughs> on through our list, now our price is getting a little high here uh, because it is a really sweet gaming system. Um, just remind you that Sasha's budget is $2,100. So what we want to do is, you know, go to our forum, cat5.tv slash CPU2017. You'll see a link there. You can go to donate.category5.tv. There's actually a drop down where you can increase Sasha's budget um, by contributing uh, to her wedding uh, nice. as well. So, Thank you. Yeah. So we're, we're going to do this. So don't get scared, Sasha. When you see the price, it's going to happen. Okay, so I know your budget. We're not going to go over your budget, but we are going to smash past your budget. Okay, so um, looking at the graphics processor, speaking of going overboard, it's one of those tough things where, you know, you can spend this and it's high to get because you need VR. You need you need 4K is the big thing right now, but you might as well be ready for VR as well. So realistically, you know, starting price is pretty high. As it is, so then do you do you go with just the base like 1060, or do you up it to a 1070 and better cooling and better card, pay more? But it's you know where do you where so it's finding that happy medium. So that's why mm-hmm. we are going to go with the GTX 1070 eight gigabyte uh, with dual fan, and it's an ASUS card as well. But this one is smashing our budget, Sasha. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Look at the price point. Four, but that's four nice. and a half out of five stars. It's the uh, GTX 1070 from ASUS. Uh, and it's got the dual cooling system. It's a beautiful card. It's ready for VR. It's ready for anything that you can throw at it uh, based on today's stuff, Sasha. Uh, and this one is uh, the base clock is 1797 megahertz as opposed to, you know, stepping down one card. Uh, which is still 579 bucks is only 1506 megahertz. So you're going to get a lot more speed performance out of this one. Um, so there you go. So that's the video card. So what do we need to look at here? What, uh, what have I observed with this card, of course, is the, uh, the interfaces. So you need HDMI output for your TV, and there's two of them. Oh, nice. Perfect. Okay. So having two means it's VR ready. You can have a VR headset, and you can have your TV hooked up at the same time. Very cool. Okay. Uh, wait, so if that happens, uh, this is, might be a, just a dumb question. I don't know. No dumb questions. Okay, so if you can have the VR s- headset on. Yes. We're so not buying a VR headset no, I know. as part of the build. But no, that's I know. I know. future ready. Be ready right? for it. So if Dave is playing like virtual reality, reality game, the yeah. TV, like I would be able to see what he sees on yes. the TV? Okay. That's, yeah. I just want to make sure I yeah. could watch him yeah. play. It's also got display or port. It's also got DVI. Um, okay. So you're set. Yeah, or just, you know what, Sasha? Just get a second uh, headset. That works too. There you go. Cool. That sounds good. We can hang out together in an alter- alternate reality. Mm-hmm. Power <laughs> supply. Now, I like thermal take power supplies. I use mm-hmm. tough powers and you know good good quality thermal take uh, PSUs. C128D is like no, don't go with thermal take power supplies. They suck. That's what he was telling me. And I'm no, they don't. I. The problem is there is this thing that happens in computing where. Brands try to get all of the markets saturated. Mm -hmm. So they bring out the consumer line, which are basically garbage. They bring out the the higher-end business line and the gaming line. And um, those are the good ones. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. But the consumer stuff, and I mean, when I say consumer, I don't mean all consumer things are garbage. I'm, I mean, companies will bring out a $200 laptop and a $700 laptop and a $1,600 laptop. Well, guess which one is the best? And yeah. guess why Apple is perceived as being better quality? It's because they don't do the consumer grade stuff. So it's not that PC versus Mac dollar for dollar is any different. It's that PC tends to have a lot of junk, lower end stuff. Yep. So Thermaltake is no exception. You know, Acer does it, HP does it. They've got all these different lines and Thermaltake has the entry level cheap stuff and they've got the really good stuff. But that said, I do want a good power supply for this system. It's got to be reliable. And what says reliability other than a 10 year warranty? Uh, what says um, good quality other than 80 plus gold certification. And so that is why I'm actually leaning toward a Corsair PSU. So that's what I've got. Corsair's RMX series, they've got the RMX 850X. It's an 850 watt power supply, fully modular. Everything that I mentioned there, 10 year warranty tells me that they believe in it. It's only 174 bucks and 44 cents. So when I say only, it's actually cheaper than what I would call maybe an equivalent thermal take. I have that power supply. This is what we want. It is a great Has it ever failed you, Jeff? No. Has it ever let you down? No. There you have it. It is a great power supply. And with a 10-year warranty, I mean, that just tells me that they believe in the product. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Some people say, I don't care about warranty. I don't need warranty. That's probably me. But when I see uh, a one-year warranty, I think they probably are going to fail after a year. Right. When I see a 10-year warranty, I think I'm going to be replacing my computer before this thing is dead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Okay, so after the power supply, you know, we're getting into the real nitty-gritty here. Uh, We've chosen our case. Uh, I guess the only thing left, Sasha. Yes. (sighs) Keyboard and mouse. I can get you one for 40 bucks. Okay. What does it look like? It looks like this. Woo. All right. So we wanted something wireless so that it can go. See, I'm super happy I picked black. Well, I went, I changed it to black. I had a white one selected, and then I got the black version instead. Nice. And I even chose red keys for you. They have it in all different colors, but I chose red. I thought Dave might like that. Dave will like that. Does the keyboard light up? The keyboard does not light up as far as I know. Okay. However, but it is wireless. W- with a $40 price tag mm-hmm. and being wireless and Can't go wrong. all that stuff. And also the motherboard comes with a mouse pad, incidentally. Really? <gasps> so you've got all the stuff Oh. for a killer gaming system. Very nice. Don't forget you're going to need to add some batteries for the keyboard and mouse. So... Keep that okay. in mind. Just grab some, you know, eco-alkalines from yes. home hardware or wherever you can find them, and then you're, you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Good to go. Look good? No, it looks uh, really good. Bluetooth wireless or? Um, no. This would be um, a USB receiver, okay. so 2.4 gigahertz, but right. it has its own receiver. So, all in all, now we've got a $6 thing of Arctic Thermal Compound, price before tax, in Canadian dollars. Ready? Drum roll. Okay. Two thousand seven hundred and two dollars and seventeen cents. So pre-tax. Pre-tax. Okay. But that okay. our budget is pre-tax. Our budget is pre-tax. Okay. <laughs> nice face, Sasha. <laughs> Did all this work? Who? Yeah, tax here thirteen percent and talking about going up to fourteen. No, thank you. Okay, so twenty seven oh two. We need to knock six hundred dollars off of that just to uh, to meet Sasha's budget. So let's see what we can do for. Uh, head on over to donate.category5.tv and you'll be able to pitch in that way. I'm going to do the same and uh, we're going to see next week what we were able to accomplish here. So thank you, everybody. Are you happy with that? I am so happy. Looks with super that. sweet. <laughs> yes. Sasha is going to build this thing with her own two hands. I'm just going to stand there like a boss, just being like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, no, nah, that didn't go there. Uh-oh. You nervous? How sticky is the thermal paste? It's very sticky, but you don't, yes. you don't eat it and you don't touch yep. it. I don't eat yep. it and I don't touch it. You'll okay. learn this. Well, you need it, but don't touch it. Don't eat it. <laughs> don't eat it. Don't, okay. don't eat it. Don't, don't eat, eat it. it. What do you do with your computers? I never eat paste. Well, toothpaste, I guess. I don't eat toothpaste. Okay. Yeah. Not thermal paste. You're going to learn okay. how Sorry. all this is done, Sasha. I'm yes. going to show you. But you basically squirt it right in the center of the processor just as a little pea-sized blob. Yep. And then when you put the fan down on top of it, the, the heat sink, mm-hmm. it will squish it and disperse it. Beauty. Yeah. yeah. That's I'm how really actually very excited about this. Super scared. Dave is so excited. He doesn't even know how excited he is. Yeah. 
All he knows is that the next time he's allowed on the show, it will be a be great show for thing? him. Yes. Oh, yes. That is oh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. So this is a wedding gift for Sasha's husband to be, and uh, and also incidentally his birthday, and a way that we can mm-hmm. um, give back to Sasha as well for all of her contributions here, uh, being part of the show. So, all right, that's that. That's how true. are we doing? So I, I have a question. Yes. If we end up, you know, if through the kindness of you know the viewers, we end up going over the price point. Are we going to, like, step it up even more? Well, this is this is the dream machine. Oh, okay. We've yeah. got the, the great video card. We've got the great RAM and 32 gigs of it, not 16. Right. So if we don't meet it, then we may have to cut down to something a little right. lesser. But if but we go over, maybe we can get If we go those over, VR then Sasha has money left over. <laughs> no, no. I think Sasha <laughs> would have money left over at that point. No, well. Would be fair. I, I would just donate it to the show. Oh, well. Then go ahead. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, It'd be I mean, weird we'll to see. meet. We'll okay, see. we'll see. We'll, we'll talk see about how this. you do. <laughs> we'll discuss it with you once we far exceed the ten thousand dollar goal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, that's all the time for that. But uh, are you ready to hit the newsroom? I am. I know that this is like this is ending up being a, like a late uh, news broadcast. But uh, if we can head over there, you can tell us oh, what's up. Let's do it. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category Five TV newsroom. The UN is about to get serious about killer robots. Do you have your own website? Google is going to start warning users that your site is not secure if you have forms on a site that doesn't use a secure connection. Marcus Hutchins has pleaded not guilty. And the world's largest data center is being planned for the Arctic Circle. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're gonna find. Five dollars and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories for the week of August 23rd, 2017. According to Elon Musk, Mustafa Suleiman of Google's DeepMind and 114 other leading figures in robotics and AI who have signed an open letter urging the United Nations must act to ban the use of autonomous weapons now. The letter outlines in clear detail just how quickly the use of autonomous weapons could get out of hand or into the wrong hands. These can be weapons of terror, weapons that despots and terrorists use against innocent populations, and weapons weapons hacked to behave in undesirable ways. We do not have long to act. Once this Pandora's box is opened, it will be hard to close. Robotics and AI communities, as well as human rights groups, have long argued that autonomous weaponry has the potential to inflict extreme crimes against humanity in conflict zones. After commending the UN for establishing a group of governmental experts to review the issue, the letter implores the group to find a way to prevent an arms race to those acquire to acqu- an arms race to acquire these types of weapons. The UN group was scheduled to begin their work on Monday as well, but has but has been rescheduled for November. Subsequently, the letter urges the group to double their efforts once they finally meet in the coming months.
Mary Wareham, the lead coordinator of the campaign to stop killer robots, said earlier this year, killer robots would remove the human from the kill decision. That crosses the fundamental moral and ethical lines we don't believe should ever be crossed. Hmm. Okay. Do you have a website hosted without an SSL certificate? You need to move all your forms to a secure connection right away. Starting in October with Chrome version 62, all sites will show a not secure warning when users enter text in a form in a form on an HTTP page and for all HTTP pages in incognito mode. The new warning is part of a long-term plan by Google to mark all pages served over HTTP as not secure. To prevent the not secure notification from appearing when Chrome users visit your site, only collect user input data on pages served using HTTPS. Marcus Hutchins, the British security researcher instrumental in neutralizing the WannaCry ransomware worm that, was sh that shut down computers worldwide in May, appeared in federal court Monday and pleaded not guilty to unrelated criminal charges that he created and distributed malware that steals banking credentials. Hutchins, who is free on $30,000 bond, was arrested August 3rd in Las Vegas following the Black Hat and DEF CON security conferences. IBM security researchers have reported that the malware was being advertised in Russian underground forums with a price of $7,000. It was billed as a method for criminals to extract passwords and other financial credentials transmitted in major browsers. The ads also claimed Kronos could evade antivirus detection and protection from browser security sandboxes. Hutchins, who works for Cryptos Logic of Los Angeles, is going to live in Los Angeles while awaiting an undetermined trial date. He will be tracked by a GPS monitoring device. He has been ordered not to touch the WannaCry sinkhole, presumably because if it's shut off, it could possibly make the ransomware start spreading again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plans to build the world's largest data center are being made public. The facility is set to be created in the Norwegian town of Balagin, which is located inside the Arctic Circle. The firm behind the project, Kolos, said the chilled air and abundant hydropower available locally would keep, help keep its energy costs down. The area, however, suffers the country's highest rate of sick leave from work, which may be related to its past as a mining community. The U.S. Norwegian company says that it has already raised several million dollars for the project from Norwegian private investors. However, it is still working with the U.S. investment bank to secure the remaining necessary funds. It is basing its record-setting claims on the amount of power it intends to draw on to run its computer servers, roughly the same amount of power as Amazon, 1,000 megawatts. But in this case, it will be housed at one single location as opposed to Amazon, whose data is dispersed over several physical locations. In comparison, Facebook's data center in the area draws just 120 megawatts. Big thanks this week to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis. Thanks, Sasha. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and our website is Category5.tv. want to just quickly, before we wrap up the show tonight, just thank all of you who have been contributing to uh, support Category 5, the TV network here, Category 5 Technology TV. Our patrons, uh, you really keep us uh, strong. Thank and you. If, if you would like to contribute now, something weird has happened because Patreon has set a new minimum. Now, we, oh. used, to say, we used to say, you know, contribute a quarter per episode, mm -hmm. and I was cool with that. Um, Patreon has changed the rules, and the minimum contribution is $1 per episode now. Oh, okay. And that is them. That's not something that I changed. So you can cap it off. If you want to just give a dollar a month or something like that, you can just say you want to only give $1 dollar and just do it once per month mm -hmm. and that will do it now we broadcast four to five weeks out, out of every month depending mm -hmm. on how many wednesdays there are um, so um, the most you would pay is four to five times whatever you contribute so uh, for those who are supporting us on patreon now we've got some great rewards for you uh, as you know because you've been watching some of the uh, the 
private Patreon uh, patron only posts. Uh, we've got some really exciting stuff and some changes coming. So uh, this is the time to get over there uh, through our website category five TV and show your support of the show. And uh, it's going to be really, really cool moving forward. Thank you. All right. That's all the time we have. That how went we, fast. How do we talk about your computer build for an entire hour? <laughs> Pretty easily, so, actually. It's so exciting. Yeah. That was like full blown geekery right there. I'm like, Super excited to see this thing. Okay, now, Jeff. Yes. To, in order to keep this a secret from Dave, I can't have these parts shipped to my house. So I'm having them shipped to your house. Okay. Yes. You can't super fall in love with my computer. I, I need will those fall- pieces. I need those pieces. <laughs> don't don't uh, tell Jen. I will fall in love with the boxes as they get delivered don't, to my door. Don't tell Do your not- wife. Because I want to know the look on her face when she sees all of these high-end <laughs> she thinks that you've gone crazy. She'll think you did a spending spree on Amazon. Am, am I opening the boxes? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing the unboxing? Just You could record oh an unboxing goodness. there. <laughs> I, see, I, I was going to say just have them sent as a gift. That way I can see it as a gift. When it shows up, that way I know, okay, this is oh, a, this this is a Sasha funny. box. But if I'm actually opening these up... <gasps> You have to, though, bring them in here. You have to bring them in here. I cannot promise anything. (laughs) Wow. Okay, so once all the parts have arrived, Sasha's going to be building it. So Mm -hmm. make sure you you join us for that as well. Now, next week, we've got a special guest going to be joining us. And uh, and then you are away for two weeks for your wedding. And uh, then you're back, and that's probably when we'll get started. Do the actual build. Yeah. Yeah. You'd expect everything should be here within the next couple of days, let alone... Uh, by right. then. So maybe next week we can start looking at stuff. And that would be really yeah. cool. All right. I want it to already be done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, everyone, for your input. I appreciate it very, very much. It helped make my job a lot easier when it came to putting this all together. So really big thanks for me because without you, I really could not do this. I just realized mm. no monitor. It's You're hooking this up to a TV, correct? Yes. That's it. Okay. So there's no need for a monitor. Okay. Uh, sorry. 60-inch monitor. 60-inch 4K. Come on now. <laughs> LibreOffice Writer. 60-inch. <laughs> go big or that's go home. Big Category document. 5. Like, I am life-sized. My head is actually larger on your TV than it is in real life. It's so funny when I play Retro Pie. Like, yeah? it's so oh, super know, funny. Right? Like that Montezuma's game. I'm playing Nibbles. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. All right, we'll see you next week. I hope you're excited. I'll see you next Wednesday. Yes. Good night. Bye. Good night. <laughs>